morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, and welcome to Global Atheist News Roundup, dateline the 25th of November 2023. This week's headlines. Ayan Hersey Ali tells how she converted from atheist to Christian. An audience flees after a student shouts Aluha Akbar during a fiery Palestine debate. Islamophobia definitions threaten the free speech at 20 plus universities. Anti-Islam populist Gert Wilders wins a dramatic victory in the Dutch election. Mormon leaders are accused of covering up a decades-long epidemic of sexual abuse and incest. The National Secular Society tells the Scottish Government to keep religion out of sex education. Hamza Yousaf's victory was a scheme of Satan. Jane Ozan resigns from the General Synod over its callous disregard for LGBTQ plus people. And a conversion therapy ban is tabled by a Lib Dem peer. Now, our normal Islamic correspondent, Momus, has important marital duties today. It's his wife's birthday. And Free Thought Productions has one important rule. Family comes first. So I will be reading his part instead of him. Prominent atheist Ayan Hersey Ali says she has adopted Christianity. She explains, part of the reason is global. Western civilization is under threat from three different but related forces. The resurgence of great power authoritarianism, and expansion in the forms of the Chinese Communist Party and Vladimir Putin's Russia, the rise of global Islamism, which threatens to mobilize a vast population against the West, and the viral spread of woke ideology, which is eating into the moral fiber of the next generation. We endeavor to fend off these threats with modern secular tools, military, economic, diplomatic, and technological efforts to defeat, bribe, persuade, appease, or survey. And yet, with every round of conflict, we find ourselves losing ground. We are either running out of money with our national debt in the tens of trillions of dollars, or we are losing our lead in the technological race with China. But we can't fight off these formidable forces unless we can answer the question, what is it that unites us? The response that God is dead seems insufficient. So too does the attempt to find solace in the rules-based liberal international order. The only credible answer, I believe, lies in our desire to uphold the legacy of the Judeo-Christian tradition." End quote. A debate about Palestine at a university became vicious after an audience member started shaking his fist and yelled, Aluha Akbar. The shocking remark caused a scene at University College Dublin, which saw security intervene as audience members began to leave. Guests were said to be discussing whether the West is doing enough to support people in Palestine. The motion for the debate was, this house believes that the West has failed Palestine. Those featured in the discussion included Irish politician Richard Boyd Barrett and barrister Natasha Hausdorff, a leading pro-Israel voice. Discussions started to become heated after Boyd Barrett refused to condemn Hamas. Audience members were then seen having fer a ferocious verbal exchange. See this video.
21 universities have adopted a definition of Islamophobia rejected by the government amid free speech concerns. One in eight universities risks chilling free speech around Islam by adopting a controversial definition of Islamophobia, the National Secular Society has warned. Research by the NSS found that, out of the UK's 166 universities, 21 employ the definition of Islamophobia formulated by the All-Party Parliamentary Group on British Muslims. This defines Islamophobia as a type of racism that targets expression of Muslimness or perceived Muslimness. The government rejected that definition in 2019 amid claims that it would limit free speech and conflict with equality law. Universities which use the APPG definition include the Universities of Edinburgh, Nottingham and Loughborough as well as Imperial College London. Bournemouth University and Suffolk University use different definitions of Islamophobia which similarly restrict criticism of Islamic traditions and practices or simply Islam. Veteran anti-Islam populist leader Gert Wilders has won a dramatic victory in the Dutch general election with almost all votes counted. After 25 years in Parliament, his Freedom Party, PVV, is set to win 37 seats, well ahead of his nearest rival, a left-wing alliance. The PVV can no longer be ignored, he said. We will govern. His win has shaken Dutch politics, and it will send a shock across Europe too. He told the BBC that, of course, he was willing to negotiate and compromise with other parties to become Prime Minister. The PVV leader won after harnessing widespread frustration about migration, promising borders closed and putting a hold on his promise to ban the Quran. Before the vote, the three other big parties ruled out taking part in a Wilders-led government because of his far-right policies. But that might change because of the scale of his victory. See this video. Ik zeg jullie, Nederland, de kiezer heeft vanavond gesproken. De kiezer heeft gezegd, we zijn het zat, we zijn het spuugzat en wij willen. En daar gaan wij voor zorgen dat die Nederlander weer op één komt te staan. Die Nederlander, die Nederlander, die heeft ook hoop. En de hoop van Nederland is dat de mensen hun land terugkrijgen. Mormon leaders are covering up an epidemic of sexual abuse that rivals scandals exposed within the Catholic Church, victims have alleged. The Utah-based religion has repeatedly protected perpetrators and punished those who speak out in a bid to protect its reputation at all costs, it is claimed. Victims believe abuse is rampant, with Mormon families said to be suffering extremely high rates of incest. Young girls subjected to horrific abuse say they are told to forgive their assailants and discouraged and are discouraged from reporting it to the police. The Mormon Church has been embroiled in several high-profile cases in which it has been accused of covering up sexual abuse, but the true scale of the crisis has never before been exposed. And this at a time when the Church's membership growth rate is at its lowest since 1947. Allowing lessons on sexual health to be taught according to a faith ethos risks children's well-being, the National Secular Society has warned. 
Responding to a government consultation on the delivery of relationships, sexual health and parenthood, RSHP, education in Scotland, the NSS said, allowing it to be taught as part of religious and moral education, RME, would undermine the promotion of health and well-being and threaten LGBT inclusion. The new guidance allows for RSHP education to be delivered predominantly through RME, which the NSS said is incompatible with inclusivity. Many faiths explicitly preach that same-sex relationships are morally wrong. This includes the Catholic Church, which manages the majority of Scotland's 360 denominational schools. The guidance requires that schools promote a climate in which children and young people feel safe and secure, but also where RSHP plays a central role in promoting the ethos of a school. The NSS said it is not credible to claim a safe and secure environment can be created for children whilst RSHP can be delivered through a religious perspective, which promotes the idea that same-sex relationships are immoral. It recommended that RSHP be taught exclusively within a secular health and well-being curriculum. The lead pastor of an evangelical Christian charity has said Humza Yousaf's election as First Minister to Scotland was a scheme of Satan. Dave Brackenridge preaches at the Home Church of Scotland, a charity registered under the Advancement of Religion. He made the comments in a sermon live streamed on YouTube last month. See this video. How do we get to the place where we've got a Sikh Prime Minister and a Muslim First Minister, but a Christian can't go anywhere near the table in politics? How do we get there? Satan. <laughs> like, it's, how do we get there? Christians are hated. Christians are despised. How, how on earth did we become the group of folk that's no trusted when actually, like, all we actually do is love people? I don't understand it. It can only be a scheme of Satan, can't it? Because it doesn't make any sense other than that, right? But we've got a godless parliament. We've got godless leadership in our nation, and it needs to change. That's why we're called to pray for our leaders, right? Because Ricky Sunak needs Jesus. Very important, very, very difficult for the rich to inherit the kingdom of heaven. We know that, but the man needs Jesus. Hamza Yusuf needs Jesus. Brackenridge is also chief executive of Scottish charity Rookie Rockstars, which provides anti-bullying workshops in primary schools. It claims to operate in 23 out of 32 Scottish council areas. Rookie Rockstars has received over £23,000 in funding from the Scottish Government and £28,000 from the National Lottery Community Fund, who are now investigating his comments. The Scottish Government has declined to comment. Jane Ozan, the director of the Ozan Foundation, quit the Church of England's Parliament two days after the biannual gathering titled Live, Loving and Faith that saw bishops, clergymen and laymen discuss implementing same-sex blessings. In February, the General Synod announced it would continue to prevent priests ordaining same-sex marriages, but that blessings would be offered instead. On Friday, the 17th of November, Ozan announced that she has quit the decision-making body due to the callous disregard of the harm Church of England teaching causes LGBT plus people. She added that the bishop's unity at all costs agenda is highly abusive and in a letter to the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, she wrote that she can no longer in all conscience stay in an institution which continues to condone the abuse of LGBT plus people, particularly young LGBT plus people in our care. 
In response, Welby said he respected Ozan's decision to resign, but has asked the provincial safeguarding officer to investigate over the allegations of abuse made. Ozan said she feels a great sense of both sadness and relief at leaving the Synod. She added, saddened that I couldn't do more to open the eyes of those in positions of power to the harm that LGBT plus people continue to suffer because of church teaching and relief that I no longer have to put up with the vile homophobic abuse from those who profess to serve a God of love yet preach judgment and damnation. I pray that one day they may see the damage and trauma that they have caused. See this video. Seeing a member of the church, uh, she came to me and said, same sex attraction isn't something from God, it's Satan whispering in your ear. He's trying to distract you away from your relationship with Jesus. She pulled out a dried poppy stick. Um, and she said, how gay would you say you feel now you've been through all this? And I sort of pointed to about here on the stick. Um, and she celebrated at the time. Anything that you could find a finger to point and blame, it was found. And it was, oh, this is the reason you're gay. And we need to pray into that. And we need to, you need to forgive the people who have hurt you. And when in reality, no one had ever hurt me. No one had ever made me broken. I was, wasn't broken in the first place. I've had suicidal thoughts on and off two suicide attempts. I just almost describe it as being in shell shock, like someone had stripped everything I knew away about myself and sort of replaced it with essentially what I now realise were lies. While prayer is an incredibly powerful thing and it definitely has its place of showing support to someone, it doesn't mean that you can use it to essentially inflict hurt on someone. A proposed ban on conversion therapy in the UK, which would introduce unlimited fines for those found guilty, has been put forward in the House of Lords. Baroness Burt has tabled a private member's bill proposing a UK-wide ban, which will now be debated next year. It comes after the government left out a ban from last month's King's speech, five years after first promising one. Baroness Burt, a Liberal Democrat peer, said there was a cross-party consensus in favour of the measure. Conversion therapy refers to practices aimed to change or suppress someone's sexual orientation or their gender identity. Baroness Burt's proposal would ban practices aimed at both. Shortly on this channel, you can watch Tercia and I chat with guest Mike Bell, a US military veteran ex-Christian. And don't forget to watch Views on the News, the show where our opinionated panel give their views on the items I've just reported on. This has been Global Atheist News. Please like, subscribe and share. Thank you for watching.